I grew up in the west end of Louisville in, in the Portland area. My dad was a great dad when uh, he was a great dad, until he wasn't. And so when he derailed psychologically, he believed things that were not true. He heard things that were not true. We were held at table at the table with guns or knives or um, this molestation took place in our home. I ended up living in a car uh, at 16 years old. Kind of got a taste in my mouth and in my, my soul of what rejection and, and no value felt like. I didn't feel like I had a lot of worth. I went to the streets um, where I was from, knew all the wrong people in the right places, and began dealing drugs. A friend who was an attorney called me and said, um, hey, I'm going to break every bar, I think, by letting you know that you're being brought out on a sealed indictment. That night, uh, I took matters in my own hands and went up and executed my plan of vengeance and uh, slayed my victim, the person who was bringing me out on a sealed indictment. I'll never forget, I took two steps and uh, turned around, put my finger in his face and said, that's what you get, rat. That's where how cold and callous my heart had been at that point in time in my life. Uh, my sister had been saved just prior to that and she began telling me about Jesus. On that night, I was high. I was sitting in a room with the lights out, listening to Black Sabbath, smoking weed, when the presence of the Holy Spirit came into that room and just leveled me. I threw the joint out the window, got on my face, began to cry. My high went away. Um, I had clarity and been numb for so many years, I could feel. Trial date came along. Three long weeks of grand jury trial, was found guilty of wanton murder. Should have got death or life, but I was given 35 years instead. I went into the prison with a 10th grade education, and uh, God began doing amazing things from that point on. I was able to get a GED and associates, a bachelor's in theology, a master's in divinity. Um, taught discipleship classes for a lot of years. While there, I was able to see some of the horrors. So I saw families go away. I saw uh, children be taken away. Um, a lot of trauma throughout the years. And so when I came out of prison, uh, I, I realized the deep convictions that I had felt from that. So the Prisoner's Hope is a very multifaceted, um, holistic organization, and we really have tried to make it that way. We uh, come alongside and help the family. We also provide professional counseling for the children. It, trauma is very common uh, with the people we work with, um, not only from days prior to incarceration, but during incarceration, we frame up a narrative around that trauma, traumatic situation or traumatic event. That narrative slowly but surely turns into a belief system that kind of becomes a driver for our lives. It drives us into unhealthy places. It causes us to migrate toward unhealthy people. It puts us in unhealthy situations. So World Impact Trauma Healing when I, when I got on board and began uh, through some of the classes, I, I was first thinking about how, what a great tool this would be to impact our people. And it's interesting how it first impacted me. And it kind of took me back to some places where I had to, to do some soul searching and, and go back in some of the camps that I'd set up and and debunk some of the belief system that I had in place for my own trauma. Uh, they, they helped change some pieces in my own life. That's how God works, you know, He changes it in us and then He gives us the opportunity and the platform to change it in others.